Well, good morning, folks. I'm back on my property this morning. We got a really nice rain over the last few days. And I'm over here going to check my field cameras and check that new watering hole I dug a couple of weeks ago to see how much water's in it and put out another camera. I got a camera right there that's taking a picture of me taking a picture of it with this camera I got mounted on my chest but I'm going to take this camera and move it down by the watering hole to see if I can get pictures of wildlife getting water drink so I'm going to cut that off and take this off this tree beginning to get a lot of deer on my other camera that's my cell camera on the front of the property where I took down all those trees and lights gotten in and more vegetation is going a lot a lot more deer activity on the front we have quite a few deer over here mostly does but anyway so I'm gonna check this SD card real quick and then we'll go for a stroll around to the property. Okay, I dumped that uh, SD card onto my computer and I've got my computer with me so I can dump the other camera at Waterhole 2. But uh, yeah, it's a very nice day over here today. Uh, it's been raining. Today is Friday, the May the 27th, and it rained Wednesday, Thursday, off and on. And then it came a pretty good shower last night and this morning. The clouds are broken off. It's really, really nice over here. So I thought I'd just walk it today. But I do have some questions. I have, been, I'm not a, uh, oh, this is for the YouTubers, I guess. But I put some videos out. And one of them was called Let the, A Day at the Range. And another one was just on the property where the truck delivered rock and all that. And then I noticed that whoever the YouTube police are, they flagged my day at the range and one of my videos at the property is being um, copyright claim. And I thought, hmm, I'm not sure that I did anything that violated copyrights because it was just a, a day in my life. And uh, but anyway, so I got, I know I got at least two, and they, and they say that, that, that it could not be, I could not earn money because of copyright claims. Well, first of all, I don't think there is any copyright claims. Secondly, I'm not trying to make any money. So I don't know what that's all about. All I'm doing is just sharing what I do. I'm not looking to make any money off of anything. But anyway, I thought that was interesting and confusing. But anyway, so I'm going to cut the camera off and walk around. When I get to the water and hole number one, I'll uh, turn it back on and take pictures of it. Talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's got some water in it, but um, I don't know if I can get that down there where you can see that or not, since this is a chest-mounted camera. But I do see where it's settling right in here, and I need to probably build that up around the lip of that tub 
so that when the water comes off it'll flow into it so when it gets dry I'll bring my shovel down here and build all that up and try to move some of this over here some of that over over there over here and there's some back in here right up there is where I dug with the excavator to dig uh, some dirt to fill around it and that worked out pretty good but right up there my grandson usually kills a deer or harvests a deer in this area every year and right there where I was digging when I moved the excavator up there I found a shed off of a buck and it was uh, it's five points on one side so it possibly was a ten pointer but uh, and the deer stands right up that hill there so I'm gonna select a tree to put this camera on so that I can capture uh, any wildlife coming down here. We have uh, bobcats and fox and coyotes and all kinds of other animals besides deer and turkey that will want to visit this water hose just as soon as it gets full. I really miss the heavy rain in February because when it really came a big rain that would have filled it up, there was a spring right down underneath it and it pushed it up and pushed it way down there. And so I had to wait for it to dry out so that I could come back in with the excavator and dig out the hole again and plant it. But basically, this is where, this is what we're gonna call water hole number one. So let me find a tree to get this camera on and then we'll go to water hole two and dump that camera. Okay, I got the camera mounted. It's on that tree right there. I should get a pretty good view of everything that comes through here. And the this little valley goes through here. There's a big ridge over here uh, and several little bridges over here that goes back to the other end for the property for probably, I don't know, three quarters of a mile. And I'd like to get the excavator here and clean this out so that I can get through here with my four-wheeler easier. I can get through there pretty easy, but be nice just to open it up a little bit stuck that tree in there because i on youtube i was looking at some other guys that was doing this and they thought that adding a stick into the water a tree limb would make it look like a more natural watering hole and the wildlife will not be as skittish uh, as if, if it's just a, a hole in the ground with water so Anyway, on my other water hole, water hole number two, it seemed to work because the deer just came through it to it immediately, and uh, they were they were visiting it just about every day. So I'm gonna go up there and dump that SD card, and so I'm gonna make my way back up to the road, and uh, we'll open the camera back up when we get there. Okay, I do want to show you this. I'm still on the road. I widen all this up, you know. But uh, I really did a lot of work right around the bend. But on this section, my son has a deer stand back here. There's a that goes down a hill, and then it comes up just a little bit, and it's a flat. And Water and hole number one that we just took a picture of is back down that direction for good peace. But anyway, we were talking about clearing this flat out here eventually and, you know, so that the sunlight could get to it and plant it. So I started clearing this when I had the excavator 
when I had the extra time and uh, I started clearing this up making a path down through here I didn't get that one up I done this that and that one right there too Those will grow like crazy now that I made room for them. Now I don't want that. That's what the whole purpose is, to clean a path here. So you can get through here with the... This is almost wide enough to get through here with a truck now. Which would be nice. Or a good sized tractor. But anyway, so I cleaned all this. And I'll take you down here just a little further. And kind of point. Okay, so there's a little saddle right here. Comes off the shield, saddle, comes up in the in the the top, the flat part of the, the ridge is right here. Water and hole number one is right back down here off that ridge in that bottom. So that's a pretty good distance from here. But uh, I got as far as right here, and I wanted to go on around right through there. Probably, I don't know, probably 200 yards maybe. And then that's where the flat is that we got our deer stand. And they, they like traveling right through here actually. But they like these saddles, saddles in these little ridges but this is as far as I got I stopped right there and uh, so when I come back I'll take down a couple of those more trees and then work my way back around and start I did a lot of cutting over there about three years ago but I just cut it just off the ground and there's trees laying everywhere it's really not that nice for you know for deer to come through there. there's a lot of noise going in and coming out so i need to clean that up but anyway this i thought i'd just show you this part right here that i was working on it's probably my next rental uh work i'm gonna do anyway i'm gonna climb this hill i'll be totally out of breath Later. Wow, this has really grown up. Grown up. Grown up since uh, I thinned it out back in February. A lot of vegetation. Maybe the deer like it. They'll come in here and eat some of this stuff. Browse on it. Begin to settle around that one too, so I'm gonna have to uh, get some more dirt around it. Let's see if I can adjust this camera. There it is. So I can, I need to put some more dirt around the lip of it so that when the water comes off, it'll flow into it. It's beginning to settle real good few deer tracks the cameras were right over there right there so I'm gonna go dump it and yeah I got some more work to do around these whenever they clear out and gets dry which will be soon all right I'm gonna go dump that camera Okay, so I went down to water hole two, dumped the camera. I'm looking back toward the back of the property where I did the turnaround. I widened that. 
and uh, but uh, so I dumped the camera on water hole two and I had like 400 little four over 450 pictures most of them were weather activated I did uh, get a couple of deer there is a buck that's uh, I guess he's probably got three inches of velvet he's gonna be he's pretty good size around already so he's gonna be a nice buck he comes walking through there a couple of times but I've got another picture of him another one that's on my cell camera and I guess he's probably about six inches off of the brow now but he's and he's pretty good size around he's gonna be a nice buck he's beginning to fork and that was in April so anyway so I got 400 and a little over 450 pictures on that and then so I'm gonna walk back on my water hole number I'm sorry on my other camera up by my trailers that I moved to the water hole one I had a little over 450 pictures there but most of those were of me working around there are a few deer pictures mostly and then they're all does as i could tell coming and going but they're always been that way up on the front the does seem to during the non-mating season seems to stay up on the front and the bucks stay on the back and then uh so anyway it's mostly me working the excavator and pulling up trees and that kind of stuff so we're going to see what we can capture on this other camera probably not much of nothing because the water hose is not going to attract them yet the uh, twra tennessee wildlife resource agency told me that the watering they probably wouldn't be too attracted to until maybe august september because of the heat and the drought that they can get plenty of moisture from other vegetations and other sources readily easily so i'm not expecting too much activity really surprised early in the year when i first put down water hole two that i did get a lot of hits but so anyway i'm gonna slowly walk the sun was out and i had my sunglasses on now the clouds come back we're probably going to get another round of showers it's pretty pretty slippery out here right now which is great the other thing is on these pictures you can see i think the last time i dumped them was the end of april so from the by the 27th 20th of april i dumped them up to may the 27th and you can see the slow vegetation coming alive and growing and covering and uh, as a result of that i think on water hole number two i'm gonna have to cut down a couple more of these little saplings because of their vegetation so i can get a better better clear picture of the watering hole so that's another revelation I may take my pole saw and come in here and clean a lot of this stuff up over the road that I didn't get with the excavator. That's the other thing that happens when you do it early before the vegetation comes out, like that tree right there. It wasn't much of a visibility as far as the clearing of the road goes, but once it puts on that vegetation and it begins to put on the weight, then it bows over into the path of the least resistance or where the sunlight is and uh, as a result it comes back and covers up the road again so i'm gonna have to take care of some of that stuff the deer really like something like this though because they can during the rut because they can come up there and make a scrape right up underneath the tree but they're going to make their scrapes regardless of whether it's on the road or not like this right here would be perfect for a buck to make a scrape on it's right off the road has a nice coverage about head height chest high 
and he can run up there and scent the bush and scrape and make a nice scrape right here so that kind of stuff i i didn't i'm not too worried about because there's plenty of opportunity for them to do that in these in these open areas okay i'm gonna cut it off and i may take a picture when i get back across the road